Bangkok has everything from hyper local markets to tourist filled landmarks, from beautiful green parks to super packed shopping malls. And today we're going to show you guys just a quick little roam around and what you can find all along the MRT system, just as a quick sort of tip in your direction as to what you can do in a quick day trip around Bangkok. Now our first stop today is the Pak Klong Talat flower market actually. Um, it's just off of Sanam Chai, the MRT station. And uh, just have a look around. Uh, here you can buy loads and loads of flowers, um, lots of jasmine and geraniums and so on. But the majority of them seem to be a little bit more oriented towards relig religious offerings. So for temples and so on. And uh, I do believe that you can buy loads of uh, flowers as well for home decoration or if you want to give someone a gift or something like that. So those two options are available here. And we actually thought, uh, seeing this on the map, that this would be completely filled with tourists. But as you can see, it's a very, very local type of market. Um, I think we are the only tourist type of people here. And it's actually really, really cool to come here early in the morning. You have a very, very nice scent in the air. Uh, everything is completely filled with the scent of flowers. It's just so beautiful. And uh, wow, check these out. So you can buy these here just to bring them to the temples. It's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, guys, if you really want to experience a little bit of a hidden gem, very close to the Sanam Chai MRT station, check out Pak Klong Talat Flower Market. There is, as Naomi said, quite literally just locals here. And you can see a lot of them purchasing the flowers. And it's great just to sort of walk around and uh, snap a few pictures and stuff like that because you really get to see how the people work here. They're all like hand weaving different structures out of these temple style flowers. And uh, it's really, really special and it's something that I definitely think you should spend some time doing if you are on a quick sort of time restraint check this place out. Also worth mentioning from the Sanam Chai MRT station you can access Wang Lang Market. You just have to take a quick boat across the Chao Praia River. Um, so that's sort of a two for one. We have a whole video about the Wang Lang Market as well on our channel so make sure to check that one out. But yeah this market is absolutely gorgeous. And here in the market as well, in the market itself, so like in the hall itself and also um, outside, you can also buy loads of fruits. So as you can see here, you see here mangoes and some limes, bananas and uh, lots, lots of vegetables as well. Uh, we actually saw loads of sort of piles of chilies and so on. Um, so if you are staying in Bangkok and you want to cook yourself, um, here's definitely the place where you can buy it for local prices. Everything seems to be quite affordable here. Just outside the uh, inner market, you do have sort of the delivery section and you can see all of the pickup trucks and uh, big, big um, vehicles that are dropping stuff off. And it just gives you a, an idea sort of of the volume that is being turned in this market because there is probably around 50 different centers that are all scattered along this one street and they are all taking in fresh produce to be sold in the market. Now I'm sure there's plenty of other orders and stuff like that that are going to be going out from places like this but have a look at this. Huge amounts of chili, fresh, everything is really really fresh. We had a quick walk around and you can tell by the smell of the produce just how fresh stuff is. How interesting is that? I've never seen these beans before. Yeah. What are they? I have no idea. Maybe mung beans. They're so big. No, mung beans are mung small. Mung beans are wide. small. Yeah. I think these are really big and green, so I don't know. It's worth mentioning that the whole area around Sanam Chai MRT station is well worth your time. So add this to your list if you are visiting Bangkok. But now it's time to hop back on the MRT and head to our next destination. Let's see where we end up.
Look at how beautiful this station is. Wow. It is gorgeous. I think it's one of the nicest stations uh, that we've seen, along with Wat Mang Khan as well. Wat Mang Khan is very, very nice. That's the one with where Chinatown is, right? Yeah, yeah Wat Mang Khan is super nice. That's what I wanted to say as well. Some of the MRT stations, not all, but a lot of them are sort of decorated in a certain way. And this one here specifically, I think is so, so nice because it's kind of uh, reminiscent of the Grand Palace, I want to say. So you kind of see Thai architecture, Thai decorations and so on here in the station. It's very nice. All right, so a quick five to 10 minute MRT ride and we have arrived at our next destination. This is Queen Sirikid Station on the Blue Line MRT and we're going to go and check out for the very first time Benjikiti Park. Supposedly an incredible place to check out. So let's go and check out this park. And just look how cool this is. Every single station, every single MRT stop has its own unique vibe and that's something that makes it so interesting and it's an added little touch when you're exploring around Bangkok on the MRT. Every single station just gives you a totally different feeling. A lot of them have different stores and outlets as well for you to check out. But yeah, we've arrived. Try and find this park. The heat is picking up. The heat is picking up, yeah. yeah. It's now uh, half past 10, so it's slowly starting to get hotter and you can really feel it right now. Yep. I don't know where to go. <laughs> As you're walking from the MRT station, you can check out this amazing convention center, which is Queen Surikit uh, National Convention Center, and it seems to be absolutely massive. It's very well put together, uh, beautiful sort of a landscape, and you also have a gorgeous view over some of these apartment buildings and office blocks of Bangkok and it just sort of gives you an idea this is only one tiny little portion of the city it's so beautiful and this road as well there's it's not so busy at the moment because it's right around 10 a.m. so a lot of people are already at work but um, yeah beautiful little walk to this park you feel so small as well because all of the buildings are skyscrapers here in the area and it's really cool because you feel sort of like a like an ant you feel tiny it's very cool yeah yeah <laughs> this is the entrance here no thanks pardon directly at the entrance of the park you actually have one of these little shrines one of these little temple structures and here you can see the flowers and the fruits that you were able to buy in the flower market where we were just at. So that's how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> yep, it all comes together. This park looks incredible. I can't wait to go and check this out. Yeah. And uh, now actually sort of midday at the moment, the clouds always start popping up in the sky and then uh, it gets a little bit cooler as well because obviously you're not walking in the direct sun and uh, we're slowly going towards rainy season now so every single day for like half an hour just about half an hour it rains and uh, every single day it seems to be getting a little bit more so it's very nice to sort of start cooling down a little bit it's not it's still very hot but like it's getting there we're getting better we're going towards rainy season so that's very nice just look at how gorgeous this is with the backdrop of all these buildings. It is actually a very similar vibe to somewhere like Central Park. Um, gorgeous little sort of a lake here, surrounded by pristinely kept plants and flowers. It is a very relaxing vibe. And right now there's pretty much nobody around. There's just some people upkeeping the park and cleaning around and I believe that this park was opened in 2004 to celebrate the Queen Mother's 60th birthday um, so what a way to celebrate your 60th this is absolutely gorgeous I would like to get a park for my 60th yeah <laughs> Sadika Sadika One of the signs that you will never see anywhere in Europe, obviously, for obvious reasons. Be wa beware, water monitor. 
So monitor lizards are present here. We already saw um, a smaller one actually, sort of looked like a baby. He was very, very small. Uh, but usually when there's babies, there's mamas and papas as well. So I'm sure that there's quite large monitor lizards here in the area, probably similar to Lumpini Park, um, where we've seen loads and loads of monitor lizards lately. So I do think that they're out and about, especially right now where the park is so nice and empty and they can just go about their own business basically. Uh, yeah, I hope we're gonna see some larger ones as well. It just shows you this park, um, how quickly you can go from being in a concrete jungle to literally being immersed in nature. Very special. And it's something that stands out for Bangkok. A lot of very large cities all over the world don't really pay this much attention and detail to having green spaces like this. Um, if you go to a lot of major cities, for example, in Europe, you might have some small residential local parks but nothing on this scale and um, it's really special and it's also a great little sort of way to spend your time in the early mornings or in the evenings when it's not so hot right now it's unbearably hot and um, so we're just basically bringing you guys here to show you just how accessible different things are and how convenient Bangkok is as a city these parks are very, very interesting, sort of around sunset time as well, because obviously it looks very nice during golden hour, but uh, that's not what I want to talk about actually. Um, it's more so because there's lots of people working out in the park. For example, Lumpini Park, and I'm sure this one here as well, you have lots of people running and you have sort of, you can see how many kilometers you were running and there's uh, aerobic classes happening everywhere in the parks that are for free. So that's very, very cool to see that the community sort of comes together and and uh, looks after their health um, in a community basically it's very cool <laughs> the general population of Bangkok um, they are very focused on health and well-being and that is for sure something that stands out as well about this city go to a lot of cities in a lot of major cities in Europe and a lot of major cities in places like North America even and uh, you go to a park in the evening and it's usually just filled with uh, kids maybe in playgrounds or whatever but here you see a lot of adults out exercising and it's really special just talking about mental and physical well-being this is actually a meditation area here um, there's a sign saying meditation area and then over there you have uh, a buddha and sort of an area designated area now oh, obviously really cool. uh, both of us are wearing shorts today so we might not be able to go there um, it's usually like it's better to cover your legs and your shoulders and everything being in those types of areas but it's very nice that it's available here first impressions of Benjikiti park and um, to be honest I think it is a little bit cooler than the Lumpini Park. We've been to Lumpini Park now a few times because it's just sort of very convenient and accessible for us, but we never even really considered coming here. And uh, we're very glad that we came because a lot of you guys have been recommending this park down in the comments. And I can see why, because it's just so sort of serene, very, very idyllic and the whole setting with all of these buildings sort of surrounding it, it gives you the feel that uh, you can sort of come and escape. I'm sure if you spend a prolonged amount of time maybe in an office or something like that, and you have access to some park like this, it's perfect for a little bit of a mental break. I really love how much uh, attention to detail they're actually paying here in the park. Now check this out, just as an example, obviously now the sun disappeared behind the clouds, but uh, how colorful everything is with the amount of flowers everywhere and uh, it sort of looks like and i'm not sure they're in the middle of the water it looks like uh, they have capabilities of doing some sort of a water sprinkler show or something like that i don't know that's what it looks like from here anyway uh, not sure if that's actually the case and uh, oh there in the distance is a larger monitor lizard we found a mar large monitor lizard maybe we can go a little bit closer and uh, yeah the entire setting here is just absolutely amazing they even have a dog park there so in case you're a dog owner this is the place to come in Bangkok and uh, yeah this is just absolutely beautiful and if you walk in from the Queen Sirikit um, Convention Center and 
and you just walk in a straight line all along the beautiful lake, you end up where we are here and we are right next now to the Sukhumvit area, which is like the most central central, most popular area in Bangkok. And um, you'll see why now in a second, because it is a very interesting, very cool and vibrant area with loads of different cafes and the nightlife is what Sukhumvit really stands out for too. And the absolute best suggestion that we could give you guys in terms of proximity to the Sukhumvit MRT station is if you get off at this station, check out Terminal 21. Now we did a full video all about the Terminal 21 food court, so make sure to go and check that out. But that's pretty much all we're gonna say right now for the Sukhumvit area. We're gonna head to our local area next and show you a little bit of a hidden market. It's an absolute gem that nobody knows about. So let's go. Now on to the last bit of this video. It's coming up to midday right now. So I think it's just like 11.30 a.m. or something like that. So we haven't had any breakfast yet, which means we have to go to a market and obviously get food. Now, this here is our home station, the Sutisan station. This is actually where we're getting tea and coffee every single day for just 29 baht per cup. So it's absolutely amazing. And I really, what we want to show you with this video is that every single area in Bangkok has something special uh, to offer. And now in terms of our local Sutisan station uh, or our local area, we're staying in the area of Rachada. Uh, we have this absolutely amazing market here directly behind the Sutisan station and uh, they have loads and loads of food and clothes and so on to offer so it's a really cool environment just to go for lunch or whatever you might want to buy and this is absolutely beautiful area here because they have loads of different sort of local foods these ones here look very interesting actually what, where, what is that do you know I genuinely no idea to be honest. Looks but, um, like bean paste or something maybe. Maybe they're like bean buns or something like that. This market guys, haven't heard anybody or haven't seen anybody cover this place yet and it seems to be totally unknown unless you are a local of course in this area. So let's go and let's go and check this market out. Chicken with Yeah. One. They have all of the beautiful assortment again with all of the wait. Yeah. You can use noodle. Oh. Um, egg noodle. Egg noodle. Yeah. <laughs> they have all of the beautiful assortments here um, with different sort of uh, chili flakes and this sort of looks like a curry powder. I'm not too sure now. Maybe a peppery. I don't know. Sweet and sour, spicy sauce, some peanuts, some sugar, and so on. And uh, they have massive pots here as well. And we just ordered a uh, tom yum soup with chicken, yep. right? Yeah. It's an interesting combination because the tom yum is usually sort of like seafood style. So I got the chicken noodle tom yum with a boiled egg. So and egg noodles, no? with egg noodles, yeah. Very interested to see what this is like. And you can see sort of the setup here. Uh, this market is very 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 local you're not going to see tourists here at all i think we are literally the only tourists um that we've mm -hmm. actually ever uh, we've ever seen in here was just us and um they do have an area here when you buy your food you basically come over to the seating area which is sort of just placed in the center of the market and the food here is pretty special very local and very locally priced as well so you're getting a great bargain it's so local actually that it's quite difficult to get along with english that's why we haven't covered really this market so far because we were never like confident enough to try and do it in thai but uh, this time around we were confident enough so yeah. <laughs> even though our thai is pretty bad <laughs> thai is yeah we're, we're terrible with thai looks like the dish is just about ready I can't wait to try this out. We actually also, we got ourselves some crab fried rice from another vendor, um, which was really cool. He was cooking the fried rice on a big open wok with an open flame. Really interesting to see. Cock and cab. 
This looks amazing. Yeah. There's a cutlery in here usually, no? Nice, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got one. Okay. Chopsticks. Chopsticks. All right. Oh, we have our weapons. <laughs> Choose your weapon. Now the special thing about this market or any market in Bangkok or Thailand in general, pretty much, <coughs> excuse me, is um, that you can go to different vendors and get yourself different items from different stands and then just sort of mix and match everything together like we're doing right now. So we just got the lemon tea from over there. We have the tom yum from here and then the uh, crab fried rice from somewhere over there. and. Uh, Everyone just gets whatever they want to eat and then you come together and have a big feast. So that's always really cool to see. Very, very excited now to try these two dishes and see how they pair together. The Tom Yum chicken egg noodle with a boiled egg. And it seems to be something very unique and special. And this uh, particular food vendor is usually very busy whenever we're walking past and we're headed towards the metro to go wherever we're going usually this market is absolutely packed out with locals that are coming to enjoy their food and it's right around lunchtime right now and surprisingly this is the first day that it hasn't been packed so it seems to be something going on but we are very excited and we're actually very lucky because it's not so packed because we get to experience it without the crowds but um, very excited to try this go and then try your soup it looks spoon. absolutely fantastic. It looks like it has a lot of chilies going on in there. Um, you do have incredibly tender chicken. So I'm basically going to go in and try this chicken first with a little bit of the broth as well. See what it's like. Oh my god. The chicken is incredibly tender. It is spicy, so like it has a nice kick to it. There is a lot of chilies in there. The egg noodles as well are just kind of soaking in all of that broth. And then you have two, two delicious, juicy, tender chicken drumsticks. And then of course, a boiled egg in there to accompany it all as well. And it has a runny yolk too, which is my favorite. Mm. Are you happy that you didn't add more chili this time? Yeah. I don't need to add chili to this at all. This is definitely flavored and geared towards local taste. If you go and get a noodle soup somewhere like Sukhumvit where we just were, you're not going to get one that's this spicy unless you ask for it. It's yeah, really you're, you're also... Usually looking at the Sukhumvit area, the prices are a lot higher as well. So you like for the same soup, you might pay, I don't know, over a hundred baht, I want to say, depending on where you go. Now, obviously, if you're going to Terminal 21, as you saw in one of our videos, that's not the case. But if you're going to other local vendors, it might be a little bit more expensive than 60 baht for a chicken tam yam soup. Now I have the crab fried rice currently trying to get one of the spoons out of this thing yet and uh, the vendor actually gave us one of these little baggies with different greeneries so we have cucumber we have some spring onions and then we have some uh, lime I'm just gonna pop that right out and uh, give the crab fried rice I want I keep wanting to say fried crab rice <laughs> I'm gonna give the crab fried rice a try And follow it with the nice spring onion. Wow, this is beautiful! It's so good. Oh my god, we need to go there way more often. It's really good, yeah, very hot, but super <laughs> nice. This tom yum soup is actually blowing my face off. It's very spicy, but I do like spice. And this tea that we got too, it's helping out a lot. Who our coffee? Who our coffee? That's what the store's got. Luke actually said that the tom yum soup is so so spicy, and I'm not the type of person that, um, well, I do eat spicy food, but like, if I can avoid it, I will avoid it. <laughs> so I'm gonna give the tom yum actually a try as well. 
and see how spicy it is on the Farang spiciness level scale. I'm a little bit scared of that. It smells very spicy. Just the broth. Oh yeah. Oh, that's okay. Oh, no, it's not okay. <laughs> Help. <laughs> no, um, it's very nice broth. It's very, very spicy. But um, it is manageable, I want to say. What about the noodles? Did you try the noodles already? I had one or two, yeah. They're good. Very tasty. Try and see how spicy the noodles are because obviously they were soaking in the broth for a while now. Mm. <gasps> Not yeah. so spicy, huh? The broth is alright, but the noodles... Wow. I feel like I had a lip injection immediately. My, my lips and my tongue is completely like prickly on fire. <laughs> but um, it's still tasty. Like you still taste the individual ingredients and so on. So it's still very good. But it is for sure a local spice level. It explodes the Farang spiciness level scale. <laughs> scale level, whatever. It's so spicy. Mm. I'm really starting to salivate a lot. I nearly <laughs> drooled on the camera. <laughs> now that food was absolutely amazing. Super, super tasty. Now if you're a little bit more sensitive to spicy food the way I am maybe um, make sure to tell them that they're not supposed to add uh, spice um, but nevertheless the tom yum soup and the fried rice and the lemon tea as well they were all out of this world tasty unbelievable and that market is definitely a hidden gem for you guys so definitely make sure to check it out right behind the Suti San MRT station so as soon as you get off it's literally just directly behind the stop and um, amazing very very local very locally priced all of the produce there it's very fresh freshly made right in front of you as well and um, the whole atmosphere of that market is just very very unique and it's something that you are not going to be able to find in a lot of the more touristic parts of Bangkok and the whole point of this video guys was basically just to show you Bangkok literally has everything um, ranging from you know flower markets where we started the video off you can go out into nature there's so many different parks Benjikiti and Lumpini are only two that are on a list of many different nature areas that you can go and explore around Bangkok. You have every sort of restaurant that you can imagine from Michelin star level all the way down to street vendors. And by the way, the street vendors usually have the best food out of pretty much everywhere. Even if you go to high-end restaurants, <laughs> you won't find food on the level of street vendors here in Bangkok. And that's just what makes Bangkok so special. It is the most I think the most diverse city in terms of what you can actually experience for your time. So you can get anywhere on the MRT, you can get anywhere on the BTS around the city and very quickly you can sort of hop between amazing experiences and that was the whole goal of today's video. Yeah and uh, Bangkok generally is a very very fascinating place and uh, every single day you can experience something different here now as you might know we have been here for i believe six weeks <laughs> and we stayed six weeks in bangkok so far and uh, we still feel like we haven't seen like not even one percent of it probably and uh, that tells you everything that you need to know if you like cities and you like having lots of different experiences uh, not even necessarily party related but in terms of like culturally in terms of food in terms of shopping in terms of malls everything bangkok really has it and that's why we were staying here for such a long time yeah and everything that we did today so the entire video that you guys watched 
in total we've only been outside for around three hours so if you are short on time and you're wondering oh i'm not going to be able to squeeze in uh this this and this trust me you have time in bangkok um you can really fit in a lot of different activities into one day if that's something that you're looking to do. And for sure, um, make sure to use public transport such as MRT and BTS because you get from one uh, place to the next a lot faster because you're not stuck in traffic. First, uh, when we arrived in Bangkok at the very first time, we were using Grab a little bit, but we, it actually turns out it's way more expensive, obviously, and you need like double, triple, the amount of time just to get to your destination so MRT BTS is usually the easiest 100% but uh, yeah guys hope you enjoyed today's video for now my name is Luke my name is Naomi we are the two mad explorers and this is your reminder to keep exploring see you guys in the next Thailand adventure Kapkun Kha for watching Kapkun Krab bye bye, bye.